Hello, hello, how you guys doing? All right. Doreen, what's up, young lady? How are you doing? How are you doing, young lady? Good to see you. Good to see you. All right. How's everybody doing? Doreen, Gina, Elki, Pamela, Rainier, Rainier Borroto. All right. Merva. What's up, everybody? Media, how you doing? All right. Henville, how are you? How's Peggy? Peggy there? All right. Pretty good day today. How's your day been? Pretty good day. I was able to go to the gym for a while, play some racquetball. All right, Monique. Any racquetball any racquetball players on the on the in the group here? Any racquetball players in the group? Justo. How you doing, my friend? Good to see you. All right. All right. Adrian Jimenez. How you doing, my brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Adrian, were you were you with me in the group when we went to Tecate for that youth retreat in Tecate? I think you were. I think you went with us to Tecate, Mexico, youth retreat. All right. I think you were there. Ina, good to see you. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right, good to see you guys. We're in John, the book of John, chapter um, 18, verse 12. John, chapter 18, verse 12. So if you can get, oh, yes, okay, Adrian, yes. Yeah, you were with us. Good, good, yeah, that was a fun trip, man. That was a fun trip. Mike, what's up? My brother from another brother, Ivan Santiago, all the way from Orlando. Good to see you, man. How's your dad doing today? How did he do today? All right, Esther Artamirano. All right, Adrian. All right, Adrian. Esther is in is in the house, so we're getting we're bringing Hanford in here again. Okay, Mike, how you doing? Onika, how you doing, young lady? Good to see you. Good to see you, Onika. How's everything going? Okay. All right. All right, so your dad's doing good, awesome, awesome. Peter, good morning. Barbara Johnson, good to have you in our group. Good to see you, okay. Let us pray, people. We're gonna go into John chapter 18, verse 12. John chapter 18, verse 12. Please get your Bibles, please get your iPad, whatever whatever you can get your hands on, okay? I want you guys to follow along with me all right let us uh let us pray let us pray dear heavenly father we thank you so much for your blessings thank you for giving us the opportunity to be with you the opportunity to be able to just learn from your word and learn how much you've sacrificed for us so that we could have eternal life we thank you in the name of jesus amen Okay, we're going to go to um, we're we're going to go to chapter eighteen, verse twelve. This is still Thursday night. This is still Thursday night. Remember, in the book of John, chapter thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and uh, eighteen happened Thursday night. Six chapters, isn't that interesting? Six chapters of the book of John. Is dedicated to probably about seven hours, seven or eight hours of the life of Jesus. You can see where John puts the emphasis in his book. He puts the emphasis on the last moments of Jesus Christ on, 
our salvation and what Jesus did for us. So these chapters, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, are dedicated. And um, let me see. Uh, 19. Wow. All the way up to 19. It's like eight chapters. It's like eight chapters. Seven or eight chapters are dedicated to about seven or eight hours of the life of Jesus. This is where John puts the the emphasis okay so then now here they come uh judas comes he betrays jesus they take jesus uh they tie his hands and they take him okay um peter tries to fight tries to pull out the sword and fight uh we see that um we see that that um we see that um, J Jesus tells Peter, listen, don't, don't do that right. This is not what I came for. And then we go now, verse 12. Then the detachment of troops and the captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. And they led him away to Annas, Annas, who was uh, to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. Now it was Caiaphas who advised Jews that it was expedient for one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter, and now they're taking him away to go to Annas, okay? Jesus had told the disciples that they were all going to run. He told Peter that he was going to deny him. In chapter 18, verse 15, says, And, and, and Simon Peter follow, followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. In another part, in another gospel, it tells us that Peter followed Jesus from afar. From afar. When when Peter saw that Jesus was not going to fight, that Jesus was not going to liberate himself, that Jesus was not going to become that Messiah, and when he pulled out his sword, and all of a sudden he saw that Jesus said, no, listen, put your sword away. Put your sword away. Peter, he took off, and he left the side of Jesus, because Jesus was not going to do things his way. You know, a lot of times when we when we get in the middle of strife and we get when we get in the middle of difficulties in our life, all of a sudden we want to uh, send everything to the side. We want to uh, uh, throw everything to the side that we believed in. We want to throw the Bible and everything. And all of a sudden, it's like, it's like the Bible is only good when, when everything goes right. But all of a sudden, when things go wrong, we want to solve things in our own way. And like Peter, we leave the side of Jesus because we're going to resolve this our way. If somebody harms us, if someone lied to us, if someone cheated us, if someone did something, all of a sudden we, 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 we're going to take care of this and we're going to take care of this our way. A lot of times, I, 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 you know, if with, with all of these things that are going on, I see, I see believers get into these arguments on Facebook. Arguments about things that they cannot do anything about. And they disrespect each other. You, you disrespect each other to win an argument. And, and all of a sudden, in, in the basis of winning an argument, we, we throw away everything that we believe. We throw away the scriptures. We throw away the gospel. We throw away everything. And, and we see that Peter here, when all of a sudden Jesus did not do what he expected Jesus to do, Peter leaves him, but he follows Jesus 
and he follows Jesus from afar. As they're taking Jesus, he's right, he's hiding around the bushes. He's hiding around the bushes and, and, and he's seeing, he, he's like, he, he doesn't want to identify himself with Jesus right away. He, he you know, he, he follows him from far. He, he wants to be just far enough from Jesus where he can see Jesus, but at the same time, he doesn't want to be identified as a follower especially if he's going to be crucified. If he's going to be crucified, he didn't want to be identified with Jesus. Now, if Jesus is going to become a king and the next, uh, uh, you know, ruler of the, of, the, of, of the nation, and he was going to overthrow the government, oh, he wanted to, to be identified with, with Jesus. You see, people, sometimes we, we don't want to be identified with, with, uh, with, with God when, when God is asking us to humble ourselves. When God is asking us to keep quiet, when God is asking us to lift him up, uh, you know, when people want to be angry and people want to do this and people want to do that, all of a sudden, in the middle of anger, all in the middle of disturbance, in the middle of we got to do something about this, all of a sudden you say, why don't we let God lead us? <laughs> Nobody wants to do that at that moment because it see it looks like a cop out. It looks like a cop out, and and to, and to Peter, what Jesus was doing was a cop out. What are you doing? <laughs> Look what they're doing to you. It is time to fight. It's time to get out there. It's time to make a revolution. How could you let them do this? And the thing is that by Jesus allowing them, it's our how he was winning. See, that, that's not popular, people. That's not popular. Sometimes in a, in a moment like this, when I have stood up and I have said, uh, the church has to continue being the church in the situation that we're in, and we cannot take the view of the world, we need to continue pressing the gospel, and we need to be faithful to the gospel in the situation that we're living in right now, and the church has its hope on Jesus, and Jesus is the answer. Let me tell you something, people. To some people, I'm not very popular because of that, because some people want me to support, and they think that I should support uh, uh, destruction. I should be okay with that. I should be okay with hurting people. I should be okay with revolution. I should be okay with, with that. And, and because I have said, though we have a battle to fight, we must fight it under the, under the flag of, of, of the gospel. That's not very popular today. That position is not very popular today. Because some people think that I should that I should be more aggressive, that, that, that we need to go out there and we, need, uh, and we need to do all these things. So when Jesus humbled himself, that's, that wasn't a very popular uh, decision that, that, that he made. But Peter, he follows Jesus from afar. Follows Jesus from afar. Um, and Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Another disciple. This other disciple is actually John. Is actually John. Um, now that now that disciple was known to the high priest, and went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door outside. See. Jesus didn't want to be identified, but John stood by Jesus. He walked with Jesus. He was identified as a disciple of Jesus, and he let himself be identified as a disciple of Jesus. In fact, he knew the high priest, and he came in, and he stood by the side of Jesus. See, when you identify yourself quickly as a disciple of Jesus, as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, no matter your, where you're at, 
Uh, no one is going to tempt you. No one is going to doubt you. No one is going to put you in a difficult situation because they already know who you are. You have already let them know who you are. But when you don't let people know who you are and you sort of follow Jesus from far and you sort of don't want to let people know that you're a Christian, you don't want to let them know that you are a disciple of Jesus, all of a sudden temptation is going to be right around the corner. Because, see, the minute that people know that you are a Christian, they already know that there are certain things that you don't do. A lot of times when we don't identify ourselves as a Christian, uh, all of a sudden uh, you fall into temptation. You fall into problem. You, 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 other, other people begin to treat you differently as if you're not a Christian. And therefore, you, you're, you're putting yourself in in temptation putting yourself in temptation right away i i try to identify myself as soon as i can as soon as i can anywhere i go who i am and what i do because if i don't do that uh sometimes i put i can set myself up for temptation i can set myself up for temptation now, there are people who don't care who you are or what you do, uh, but a lot of people do. A lot of people do. Uh, when you identify yourself, uh, I am a Christian, and then if the opportunity is right, I am a pastor, and this is what I believe in. Now, these, this does two, two things. One, okay, people know uh, okay, we're not going to say these jokes around him or we're not going to say this around him or we're not going to curse around him and uh, or we're not going to tempt him with anything else. We're not going to try to... So all of a sudden, those things are taken out. The other thing that is that is that that happens is that as I say that I am a pastor and that I'm a Christian and, and in the process of my relationship with them, they see that I'm just a normal person, that I love sports, I play, I work out, I, I laugh, I, 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 you know, I crack up, I have fun, I, I do things. It, it, all of a sudden, it helps them to see, to see Christianity in a whole different way because sometimes people see Christians as stuck up people as people who feel that they're better than anyone else. But when I tell them that I'm a Christian and that I am a pastor, and then they see that the way that I am, that I'm very open to them and I let them be who they are, whoever they are, that's their business. I'm just not going to be like them. And, 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 and then when they, when they see the way that I am, all of a sudden, uh, Christianity becomes a little bit more attractive to them. And, and believe it or not, with time, those people will come and start asking you stuff like, what do you, what do you believe? Uh, do you really believe this or do you really believe that? Um, you know, and people begin to say things and begin, and you, it, it is better for you to minister to people. Easier for you to minister to people when they know who you are because you identify yourself. It also keeps you away from temptation. It keeps you away from temptation um, in many ways. In many ways. When you say, I'm, I'm a pastor. I'm a Christian. I'm married. Identifying yourself. Identifying yourself is important. Don't be hiding around who you are trying to be somebody else. Don't be afraid to let people know that you are a Christian. Peter, the reason why he denied Jesus is because he followed himself. He followed Jesus from afar. So therefore, he, he made himself available for the temptation. He put himself in that situation. Um... If you go, um, it says that uh, now that the disciple was known to the high priest as John and went with Jesus. So, so John walks in with Jesus. No, see, when John walks in with Jesus, no one had to ask him if he was his disciple. They knew he was his disciple. 
because he's right next to him and the high priest knows him and everybody knows that he's a disciple. So John never put himself in a situation where anybody had to ask him, are you a disciple of Jesus? They knew right off the bat that he was one of his disciples. Um, then the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to her who kept the door and brought Peter in. So, 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 so John actually goes up to the girl who was letting people in and said, listen, uh, uh, let him in. Peter was out there. He was like, hey, I, I'm, you know, I'm just hanging out, man. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. You know, I, I got I got nothing to do with this. I, I, you know, I'm just checking out. I'm just, you know, I don't know. And, and John comes out and says, Peter, just just come on in. Let just let him in. OK. And even when when she lets him in, uh, Peter doesn't go and stands by Jesus. Also, another opportunity he had to be identified as a disciple of Jesus so that no one would ask him anything. He, he doesn't stand by Jesus. Then uh, the servant girl went out to the door and said to Peter, You're, you are not also one of uh, this man's disciple, are you? So the girl right off the bat, the first time she goes, are you not one of his uh, uh, disciples? And right there, Peter said, I'm not. I'm not one of his disciples. I'm not one of his disciples. Um... It's okay, Dana. Don't worry about it. Take care of your family. Um, so, so he, so Peter sets himself up for the first time to, to deny Jesus because he stands at the door. He doesn't stand by Jesus. He follows from afar. He doesn't identify himself as a disciple from Jesus right away. So he sets himself up. To deny Jesus and that's the first time the girl says aren't you one of his followers no no no, I'm not I'm not I'm not he didn't like Jesus agenda he didn't he didn't like where, where, where this was going he, he, he didn't like where this was going it wasn't going according to his agenda it, it wasn't going you know the way that he wanted it then the servant girl who kept the door said to Peter you're not also one of this man's disciples and he said I'm not now the servant and officers who had made a fire of coal stood there, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed with them. So Jesus, instead of going by Jesus and standing by Jesus, he goes and he, and he joins the group. He joins the group of those that are, that are by the fire. People, be careful what group of people you hang out with. Be careful who you identify yourself with because a lot of times their bad habits can actually uh, affect us. Their bad habits can, can sometimes uh, stick to us. I'm going to turn around, people, because it's starting to rain a little bit and I got a little roof there that I can, I can be under. I'm back. So, so Peter, what he does, he, he, he goes and he, uh, he surrounds himself with people that are by the fire instead, instead of being by Jesus. You know what, people? We, we make a big mistake. We make a big mistake when we think that, uh, that we try to cover up who we are. And he just hung around the wrong people. And, and he, he, aligns, he aligns himself with the world. He aligns himself with the world. People, be careful, especially in the days that we're in today and the things that are going on right now, that you become allies of the world instead of allies of Jesus Christ. Be careful that, that you ally yourself with the world instead of with Jesus. Be careful that you, be careful that you 
ally yourself with the world because when you ally yourself with the world and you try to become like the world and you try to sound like them and you try to be like them all, all of a sudden you are you are you're making yourself vulnerable for temptation you're making yourself vulnerable to be to be tempted you're making yourself vulnerable to be questioned. Identify who you are. Be real. Be real. Be real. Do not be ashamed of being a Christian. Do not be ashamed of standing up for the gospel. Do not be in a do not be ashamed of 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 letting people know that Christ's way is the best way. Do not be ashamed to stand up for the gospel no matter what situation you are in. Now the servants of the officer who had made the fire stood there. Okay, verse 19. Then the high priest then asked Jesus about his, about his disciples and his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues and in the temple. Where the Jews have meet, always meet. And in secret I have said nothing. Why do you ask me? Ask those who you who have heard me and what I said to them. Indeed, they know what I said. Jesus said, listen, I've never hid anything. Why are you asking me like, like if you don't know? There's plenty of people who know what I've said. Why don't you, why don't you ask them? See, the priest was looking for ways for Jesus to condemn himself. But Jesus said, there's plenty of witnesses. See, people, sometimes Jesus needs his witnesses to speak out. Sometimes it is not about God speaking from heaven. It's about his witnesses and those who have experienced him say what they need to say about Jesus. It is about his witnesses speaking out and we are his witnesses. And there is a time right now that we live in that his witnesses must speak out, must speak out for Jesus. We must speak out our relationship with Jesus. We must speak out what we believe. We must speak out what we have seen and heard from Jesus. We live in a time that the witnesses of Jesus must step up and must speak out. Jesus said, listen, I've said anything, everything in, in the open. Why don't you ask those who have heard me? And then he had verse 22, John chapter 18, verse 22. And when he had said these things, one of the officers who stood struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, do you answer the high priest like that? And all of a sudden, a soldier came out and smacked Jesus across the face. My God. Smacking the God of the universe, the creator of this world, across the face. Wow. Do you know what could have happened to that man if God, if Jesus would have just said, just looked his way. Just like his presence just knocked him back in the garden. What Jesus could have done. But you know why Jesus stood there and did nothing? Because Jesus was in the process of saving you and I. Jesus was in the process of saving us. And you and I were more important to Jesus than him getting back at that soldier who slapped him in the face. One, as verse 22, and he has said these things, one of the officers who stood by Je struck Jesus with the palm of his hand saying, do you answer the priest like that? Jesus answered him, if I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But well, why do you strike me? 
Then Anna set him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. And we'll stop there in verse 23. But as Jesus was going through this, I can just be, I would love to be that fly on the wall. As Jesus, the creator of the universe, the Messiah, the Son of God, has his hands tied up and with his hands tied up, a mere human being smacks him across the face. And yet he, he stands still and he takes it. Because he's in the process of saving you and I. You know, we are, little, we are willing to take so little for the gospel. Jesus was willing to be slapped, to be punched, to be spit on, to be put on a crown of thorns, to be all this for the gospel. For the gospel. And, 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 and there's times in our lives that we confront which is crucial for the believers of God to stand up and to prove who they are and to really let the light shine and let, and, and let the salt give flavor to the earth. And, and it is a, a times for us to stand up, to stand up and to humble ourselves and to represent God adequately, adequately. See, we as Christians, our priority is to defend the gospel. I'm sorry, but this is what you've joined. And your priority as a Christian is to defend the gospel. Just as Jesus was punished and whipped and all of that to defend the gospel so that you and I could be saved, we as Christians today must defend the gospel. We cannot move away from our mission. We have a greater mission, people. Be careful that you're not grabbing on another mission. Jesus said, whatever your suffering is, whatever your suffering is, take up your cross and follow me. Whatever your suffering is, don't let your suffering become your mission. The mission hasn't changed. The mission of the gospel hasn't changed. And what, no, no matter what situation we are in, we need to stay on the mission. And Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. He doesn't say drop your cross. He doesn't say, you know, take care of your cross. He said, no, take up your cross and follow me. Just as Jesus was willing to go through whatever he went through to fulfill the mission that he came to do to save us, the church today must also take up the mission of Jesus and fulfill it. That is our first calling. I'm sorry, when you join Christianity... That is our first calling. Oh, there's a lot of right things. There are a lot of things we need to stand up for, stand up for. There's a lot of all those things that are rights and justice and all these things. But make sure that if, as you stand up with the, for those things, you're still in the con context of the gospel. Of the salvation of the world. Of of. Of, of, the, of the presence of the Holy Spirit in people's lives. You see, people, you can change laws. <laughs> you can claim your rights. But if the heart continues to be evil, what good does it do? What good does it do? 
If you have a bad neighbor, you can put a fence between you and your neighbor. But if he doesn't like you, he's going to find some other way to hurt you. And maybe you go to court and you do all these things and you find the right to put up a fence. You put your fence up. He still doesn't like you. You see, the problem is in the heart of man. And we know that only the gospel can do that. Only Jesus can find, only Jesus can change the heart of man. Stay focused. Stay on the mission, just like Jesus did. Thank you for being with us tonight. Valerie, just go back and listen to it from the beginning. Good to see you anyway, Valerie. Came in, man. I said, oh, my God, right? Valerie's coming in towards the end again. I know we don't have the same time as here in Jamaica, uh, but uh, I'm going to post it and come back in. You're able to listen to it. How you doing, Valerie? Good to see you. God bless you. We love you. We miss you. And uh, I hope everything is going for you good in Jamaica and with your husband already one year, one year married a little bit over one year ago, I was in Jamaica carrying out that wedding, beautiful wedding. It was beautiful. And uh, now a little bit over a year. Good to see you, Valerie. Go back and listen to the Bible study if you have a chance. Let us pray, people. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your blessings and thank you for giving us the opportunity to love you and the opportunity to, to just have you in our lives. We ask you, Lord, that you may give us the strength to be faithful to you the strength to carry out your will, Lord. Lord, we want to ask you again for Brother Santiago, that you may be with him and that you may give him strength, Lord, to, to get better. We pray for those that are sick also, Lord. Please be with them. We, we, we pr pray for Keturah's and Siam's dad, that you may be with them, Lord, and that you may give uh, uh, him strength and health, Lord. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, people. God bless you, and we will see you again tomorrow, 9 a.m. God bless.